a city where shadows hide more than secrets. Two detectives step out of the fog, not to solve crimes, but to crack business cases. We dig into the numbers, dissect the strategy, and shine a light on what needs fixing. Welcome to Business Noir, where every episode is a new case, and every case has a story. Welcome one more week to Two Shadows of Business, the podcast in which we analyze real life cases and we help people to bring their projects to life. We are Borja Nico. Nico, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm Nick, I'm Nico. I'm from Barcelona. I came here to well, we are in Poland. I came here uh, and two, in 2020 it was just on the pandemic. It oh, was yeah. like, and I really loved it here. And, and I decided to stay. Um, my background is in visual arts and photography, video, film production. And I've been dealing with projects of, and a lot of kinds of projects for almost 20 years. And now uh, we are decided to do this podcast with Borja. We met some time ago. And please, Borja, introduce yourself. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Borja as well from Spain. I'm a little bit longer in Poland. I've been here eight years already. And my background is uh, I'm a service delivery manager and an strategic, le uh, strategic leadership coach. Basically what I do, I help uh, different big companies to bring their projects uh, to life. That's it. Um, let's go with this week's case. We have this week the case of Christy. Okay. Show me, show me, show me the goods. <laughs> show me the goods. So, Christy, it's a musician. Ooh, She's okay. a cellist. She plays cello. Okay. But she's passionate about music in so many ways. And her dream is to uh, create a, kind of like a, a mix between a music label, but as well, she wants to be a producer. So she wants to combine these two things and produce music, but as well help bands to get more visibility. And one of the coolest uh, things of her project is that without being ex uh, exclusive, she wants to promote uh, Slavic and probably like North African languages. The idea that she has in mind is to target niches that they are not that popular, like for example, like Spanish, Italian music, there is already a lot of market for that. But what she, she has this, this feeling like there is a lot of market of going like from like Belarusian music, Czech, Polish music, but as well, not only like Slavic, but as well, she mentioned like, for example, Moroccan, Egyptian. More like minority. Minority, uh, like yeah. more I niche. I don't know if it's the right term, but just, yeah. I guess yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, let's say like, not, not that mainstream languages. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure like, uh, I'm sure it's like, it's the perfect. Uh, yeah. the, because I guess she's a... Uh, She's from any. Country? She's from Belarus. Okay. Yeah. She's from Belarus. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. We have a little bit of the as uh, we are repeating every week. We have a case every week, every episode, and we have a very brief information about this uh, this business that someone someone real actually because mm -hmm. we we want to ask our friends and we ask to ask about other people about real cases that we can analyze here in this podcast and based on that we improvise all the information that we we want to uh, analyze and, and, and achieve let's say we have a small let's say steps that we want to follow mm -hmm. because it's, if not it will be like very chaotic yeah, yeah end, absolutely right? just to the, but we have that's the that's the the challenge about it pod, this podcast is like we have information brief information and between both of us we're going to try to create a valuable and really possible business right yeah we're going to work the case and and deliver like some good starting point for 
our friend Christy this exactly. week. And then let's let's start. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Okay. Uh, so Christy, okay. What I would like to know um, her background because she is a cellist, right? Uh -huh. I guess she has um, education in classical music. I guess exactly. So uh, Christy is a musician. Uh, cello performer, but as well she's uh, she's singing, uh, sorry singing, te teaching singing, so she provides uh, teaching lessons, like oh, uh, singing okay. lessons, but so, and as well she has worked already with some musicians arranging their songs, so already she has, uh, she has done some production in, in some level. Uh, she is currently working as a, in a technological company, Uh, to an unrelated field to music, but she wants to move to uh, exclusively to do music stuff. Okay. Uh, just to clarify, because I don't know a lot about music, I mean about the business of music, um, but I guess producer is someone who kind of like not only creating the music and playing the music, but also doing some arrangements in the exactly music? there are like mainly we can we can summarize in two kinds of uh, music producers ones are like the ones that will make the full beats or full songs and then sell them okay and the other kind of producer is the kind of producer that will go uh, with the musicians that already they have their songs and uh, this producer will help the musicians to take the music To, a, to the next level, either in arranging, like uh, arranging some parts, or changing the structure of the songs, or helping on the sounds, like when you are in the studio, choosing different microphones so the, the sound sounds more like this or that. So okay. This and is she wants to do both of them. Okay. So she wants to, oh, the full pack. Yeah, the full pack. Okay. Um, she's been, uh, yeah, her education, I guess, is like in music, in, mm -hmm. in, in classical music, but also yeah. she has. Uh, yeah. And what's her experience doing that? Uh, she has like some years of experience, like teaching, and as well, like uh, working with some small bands, uh, arranging their songs and so on. Okay. So is she, and she's in Poland. She's in Poland. She's living in Poland and she exactly. wants to open it in Poland. She wants to, yeah, like she well, wants to... at least to, begin here. Exactly, she wants to begin here in Poland. Okay, okay. Okay, let's go for, um, I guess she wants to... Um, she wants to... She wants to do that because I guess she's passionate about music. Exactly. But also she wants to change. Uh, he doesn't want to work her corporation. Just the, exactly, she yeah. wants to... The, the motivation is to switch to something that is her actual passion, that it's music, and dedicate all her hours to music, but as well to help people with, uh, for example, she mentioned that a Belarusian artist that she would like to help promoting uh, artists from Belarus, but not only. So it has these two parts, like the part in the, that she wants to dedicate herself to the to the music business plus helping other people from minorities to get listen let's say okay to get better okay so she doesn't want to go i mean i guess because in um let's say the the music industry is quite very difficult to like to achieve something oh, yeah. right i mean and there is thousands and thousands of bands and and it's very but i think the different the main difference here is Because she doesn't want to have a band, she wants to help other bands yeah, or exactly. do something. So I think there is better position for them in the market to do that, mm -hmm. especially if it's about like Slavic languages or something like this. Yeah, it's niche. Uh, there is. I remember one one uh, one very successful uh, person I met. He told me once, like, uh, when you are making a business, you are either making the business to become Google or you are making a business to get bought by Google. And mm -hmm. I think that this is a clear case because the music industry, it's already, like, dominated by big sharks. You know, they're, like, literally in the world, like, five companies. And 
everything that really produces a lot of money comes from these companies. Okay. The way that I see this business is like it's a niche business. She needs to focus on the niche artist and promote them enough so they are good enough for the big companies to buy them. Mm -hmm. So in the end, if she gets the, let's say, uh, royalties of specific songs and she needs to sell them to Sony probably or to Warner, to any of the big ones, probably what they can pay it's going to be not a lot of money for the big company, but it's going to suppose a lot of money for a manager in this level. So okay. it can, I, think that, I think that the business is somewhere there. Still is a very tough business yeah. because not a lot of bands are going to get you know, in this level. Yeah. So I would not bet everything on that part of the business, but maybe focus more on the production. In the production, okay. What's the um, where it comes the the business about production? Let's say people hire you as a producer. Yeah, bands can hire you exactly. as a producer. Okay, there are, again like two ways to do that. Either bands will hire you, or you or, or artists will hire you to make their uh, songs. The other is like there is a uh, people that they record their songs and they send them they sell them on platforms like for example for stock music for movies you know you can go on the internet and get some already uh, prepared tunes so you can just make a number of songs and put them in this kind of platform and sell them for some dollars or whatever price okay to yeah me. like the, like uh, this envato market and this kind of thing so uh -huh. you can just have a, as a musician but as a musician but as a producer also you can do that yeah because in the end she is she is both producer and musician so she can produce okay and but as well like part of the of the thing that that we were talking when we had this interview is like one thing that she would like to do is to For example, she wants to take the artistic direction of the business and maybe hire different musicians mm -hmm. to perform what she tells them to perform. Okay. As well, like kind of like a curator for uh, yeah. different art, uh, musicians. So she chooses who is going to be. Okay, that's really cool, actually, because you're like, like in charge of uh, all, all the direction that you can you can choose. There right? is there is a lot of ways to do that. is is a very wide project. Um, yeah, so. and it's it's you know like it's good and bad because it's there is so many possibilities, and this is good, but at the same time, it's very easy to get lost. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's 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 wide, it's very spread out, it's spread very thin. So I guess that the first thing that we should do is to try to define a very clear path or a starting point. Exactly. Because that's the thing. It's it's great and it's gonna open a lot of possibilities, but at some point we will need to reduce it to narrow it a little bit yeah. to to work on something small that we can start rolling. What do you think? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Let's start. I I propose to start with the. Uh, the client, let's say, the, 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 yeah, the, the cl profile, profile, okay. profiling client. Profile so. of the, 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 the client profile, right? Yeah. Who's going to hire? So we are talking about uh, minorities, like in the yeah. language point of view, minorities somehow, musicians that they want to bring their music to a next level. Yeah. So they have a certain career, let's say. I mean, certain background. These bands, yeah. no, it's not the the first band that they have. Yeah. Or they, they they are aspiring to. So they have background. They have experience. They have. Yeah. They want to. They have really good quality of music, I yeah. guess, right? But we need to think about like normally the profile of the of a band. It's uh, people that maybe they, it, it will not be a, a high end client. So yeah, bands they don't have a lot of money to spend because. In the end, a band that is already professional, they will go with a producer that is already, like it has a lot of name. Yeah. And she wants to get into the business. I think that she's aiming to smaller bands 
that maybe they will have less resources to hire because already being in a band is super expensive and most of the bands don't see at certain level like a producer necessary and they produce their own songs okay so it's like medium medium levels medium level of bands let's say yeah. of, like but they want to improve they want they exactly Let, let's imagine like the band of you know people that they will have like normal job like average salaries mm -hmm. and they may decide to put some of this money to hire a producer as well i think that this is a challenge to see how can we do arrangements so the clients will buy the the products of christy without needing to spend money and i think that this is a, a good challenge you know being creative in how both of them can get the win-win without the economical transactions at the beginning yeah so like i can bet for your new studio or new producer yeah and also i know i don't risk that exactly Let, coming back again to the client profile what kind of music genre and yeah. stuff yeah i spoke with christy and she told me that basically she wants to focus in three styles that it's indie pop rock r&b and soul wow okay so basically we have in terms of style in the pop rock r&b and soul plus then the language thing so mostly she wants to work with artists that partly sing in a different language not only in english mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think that this is this is the profile. This is the, the profile. The, the, the kind three, of yeah. three genres. Yeah, I think it's like I guess in music, if you specialize, is much. Um, let's say it's much better for yeah. your yeah right. And and we have the internet now because before, if you are too niche, and you are in a small city, then probably you don't have enough. But now yeah. with the internet, I think that we can reach all around the world. And I think that this is what she should do, like decentralize herself. And okay, she's located in Krakow, whatever. But in the end, her business, I think that can be run all over the world oh, yeah. for uh, people around the globe. Yeah. And uh, I think that this is one of the biggest advantages because then she can really target this niche that if you look from the worldwide perspective is bigger and yeah but the other the other the sub client let's say i mean um to to say it in a, in some way is like the audience who is going to listen to this artist yeah i mean who is going to buy that because let's say for example i don't know like a really big example that we know very well is rosalia for example uh -huh, like yeah. she's half spanish half like she's from a town really close from from, yeah. from my place and they were like um I know very well this town and it's really nothing there um, but it's she got there she got yeah. the really famous because she's mixing these things you now mm -hmm. she's mixing Latino songs or Latino rhythm I'm I, I'm just I don't yeah. know exactly but I, in my knowledge she's, yeah. she's doing that but also with the Spanish and English yeah. so she got an audience right she got an audience because she's fresh blah blah this kind of stuff and mixing flamenco and these kind of things uh, I guess She, she is gonna do the same. She's gonna do. She's gonna mix these languages to open the, let's say the the the, the market to, yeah. uh, to other countries. The thing is, like, there are two different jobs here. One is the producer, and the other the promoter. Ah, and okay. I think that we should focus at the beginning only in the production part because this is too wide. Like from because yeah, my if if we narrow it down yeah. and we go only for the production thingy then you don't care that much about the audience because your job is with the band. Your job is with the musician. Okay. So your job is to take the music to the next level. Okay. And then there is the second part that is like what she wants to do with the label that is more about promotion. But I think it would be interesting to separate these two works. And when you are working as a producer, only produce, And then when you are working as a label, then you will do all the promotion and see like, because then exactly, the client is totally different. The, the, when, when you are working as a producer, your client is the band or the musician and the product is your skill. When you are working as a label, your product is the band and the client is the audience. Okay. So even though they're interconnected, 
if you think from the business standpoint, there are two different businesses. Okay. That they can synergize, but I think that we need to break them down. Well, as you said, it's very complicated. It's very wide. Yeah. So it's better to focus on that. Oh, sorry, do you think, do you recommend it's better to focus now in production? I think so. Okay. Because production, it's something much more controllable. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, you are selling your own skills. Okay. And Christy has enough good background to sell uh, what she wants to sell. Meaning, she knows music, she has like uh, high education in classical music. Yeah. She's been working as a, a session musician uh, and she works as a, as a teacher, as a singing teacher, so. She has a daily contact with music exactly. and musicians. She can do that. And also I think it's one of the, the interesting things uh, is when you speak one specific language, you is very actually it's very easy to your name to resonate at the end. Yeah, exactly. As could. well, she can she can do all the things with the she speaks Belarusian, uh, so. And also this, I mean, I think it's I don't know maybe I mean obviously it's it's very like uh, it's only an uh, hypothetical stuff that, uh, without any knowledge and any mm -hmm. research, but I think. Slavic languages can be like the next hit, I would say, in, 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 some, in, some, in some areas, actually, yeah. in Europe, actually. Because, um, I don't know, thanks to hip-hop, I guess, I don't know. Maybe. I'm just, I'm just but, guessing. It, but again, like that, that's more like a label part of yeah. the business. Okay, so let's, so let's go for producer. Um, yeah. So we have um, the client profile, which is yeah. basically like bands from, they speak... Slavic languages in general or just like yeah the client profile we got it like this kind of like people with probably not a lot of resources like not poor but they will not have a lot of money to invest okay perfect. so it will be an effort for them to do that and uh, we have the product also already right the product is the skills that that she she does so arrangements songs and this is something that she can do from home Oh, that this is this that is the my, yeah. exactly this is the <laughs> this is the the great thing of what she's doing is that she doesn't need a physical place because now and I, I know by experience I have a band in the past mm -hmm. and we work with a producer my band was in Spain producer was in Finland we were going to the studio recording sending to the producer the tracks and she will give us everyday feedback oh now you should change that change this this is not in tune blah blah blah. So the one of the biggest points of this business is like basically she doesn't need nothing that she doesn't have. Okay. Because so what she, she's selling is experience. Well she needs she needs to establish herself as a producer. Exactly. And tell the world that hey, I'm here. The branding is the the investment, like social media, like boosting, posts, you know, advertising. But anything else, she got it. Um, okay, so we have the business model, we have it, right? Mm -hmm. mm, just is basically, she can be anywhere in the world. Yeah. The only thing that she needs is her house and stuff, and just she's... Like, yeah, like a, a pair of uh, speakers and computer to record stuff it's, which is it's very really like she, she, she already have that so that's great so that's the, the second option will be like she gets hired to go to a studio but that will be like on the expenses of the band okay but then I think that this is something that maybe for the future but as a starting point I mean like if somebody wants to hire her directly to do that that would be amazing but being realistic Nobody's gonna hire her to go to the studio until she has some portfolio. Okay, so she needs experience as a producer. And the easiest needs. way to get this experience is from home with bands on the, you know, from internet, like working online. Because again, the cost is basically zero for her. For her. Yeah. So. That's a, that's a very good thing. Let's talk about the price for the and the cost for the band. Okay, that's an that's interesting thing. Because then, a good thing is, if you have zero cost, the only thing that you need to think about is how much you want to get per hour. And considering that probably you will not have clients like every day. So you will need to 
put certain price per hour that can cover you. Let's say, being optimistic, what can you have? Like three clients per month? Mm. One client per month? Because I guess you have to spend a lot of hours with them, no? Yeah. Yeah, because you need to do the arrangements, you need to communication, you have to wait for results. When Because mm -hmm. if you want to change something, you have to make them yeah. record again, right? So you need to wait. Yeah. It's not like, it's like, let's say, I don't know, how long, if you know, uh, how long can be like the same, the process of this? It depends. Uh, like, for example, uh, an album, um, probably you can record it in one month. The oh, one month. Okay. Really? So it's, it's not. Yeah. It, it's it's not gonna take like many months. But you need to di divide the stage in pre-production, production, and post-production, right? Okay. So basically, pre-production is preparing pre preparing the songs. So band will send you the songs that they want to record, like a demo, mm -hmm. like even like recorded in the rehearsal room, like low quality. Okay. Just to okay. hear. Then during the production, it's what I told you, they will send you the tracks and then work on them on a daily basis. Okay. And then during the post-production is uh, once that the record is it's recorded, it's the mixing. And then you give your input on the mixing, mastering. The, the, the art, the art, your art is going there. Exactly. You know? In post-production. So it can be... We need to think how to do that because it can be per hour, but I think that to to begin, I will try to do it in a package way. Yeah, because if not, it's like, a, oh, the band is going to, how much is going to cost? Yeah, it's yeah. going to be too much. Like It's better like or per song or yeah. per, I don't know. Or a pack or yeah. something like that. It will be like um, but, more. I don't know, maybe I will think like per song. It's It's very wide, but like... I can produce your song for X amount of money, and then the more songs that you add, the cheaper it is. Yeah, exactly. Because at the end, it's just like like everything else, no? It's just more more content you give me, yeah. so more. And then it's something discount. that 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 uh, we need to think. What can be a good price for a producer? You mean like to have to pay? We can, you know what we can do? Let's let's check competitors. So we can go to Perfect. on the internet, for example, uh, to Fiverr. You know the the yes, Fiverr, yes, of course. So we can go to Fiverr and check how much people is charging. So, so we, I, I mean, I guess you can have a lot of different prices. That's for sure. Of course, like, but at least we will we will see like what is the umbrella of prices that people internationally is asking for. Uh, Fiverr. Okay, because Fiverr is a, um, for those people who don't know about this this website is basically a website you can hire people for any kind of uh, any kind of things actually. Yeah. If you want to create a logo, if you want to create um, also a song, or if you want to. Uh, do an Excel file for your work or whatever. Anything, whatever anything. That, that you think that you may need a professional for, you have it. Exactly. And it actually can be a good way to start as well. To, for to, her, to, like to, uh, in, in Fiverr. yourself in Fiverr? Maybe. I'm, uh, uh, we will need to think about that. But Because on the other hand, maybe you need to, you want to differentiate yourself from the Fiverr crew, right? Mm, yeah, because I guess it's not, I mean, in my opinion, it's like... Um, when you don't have a lot of resources, you, yeah. you go to Fiverr, right? Yeah. yeah. So there is like a music producer from 100 euro, 130 euros or for 40 euros. So, so yeah, it's not really like, um, okay, let's say, for example, like in music, music and audio. There um, is a song for 20, 20 euro. Music producers. But I, I, I need to, because it's always like uh, entry price yeah and for specific this is mostly like electronic music but yeah that's the but that's the thing right just at the end is the niche that you have to, yeah you, you have to choose so let's let's put indie to be a little bit more yeah because it's kind of like yeah, a, from a 60 30 85 i guess that i would i would go for maybe 100 euros per song 100 euros per song. I don't know if it's a... Because in the end, 100 euros per song is not so 
it's not like, like you know like money that you cannot afford or yeah, something I mean, like yeah. that yeah. and especially and then you can make discounts like packages like okay 100 euro one song but then if you get a five song packages it will be like i don't know 370 and if you get 10 it will be 800 i don't know yeah but uh, uh, at the uh, beginning but also i think it's kind of like I if you want that that will be the first stage, right? Yeah. The first stage to 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 get clients to become visible, right? Yeah. Yeah. But at the end, these clients that will be interesting to to know and to achieve that these clients will come back to you. Yeah. Because or that they will promote your services somehow. Like people will listen to that. And what about, for example, like looking for uh, something like this in fiber because i remember when i was i was hiring one person to do uh, one thing in adobe after effects mm -hmm. i needed to do because i was really lazy to do that and i was like okay i need to do so look, uh, looking for what in fiber uh, i was i was looking for uh, a uh, what's called uh, an intro a, a modification a modification ah, of an intro i did i yeah. did an intro in after effects but i needed to resize it uh huh. But it was like super complicated, and was like for me it was super complicated. Okay, I'm gonna spend that. And I was it was for a Ukrainian documentary. Uh huh. So uh, my strategy was I'm gonna try to find Ukrainian artists mm -hmm. that they can help me with that. Okay. And also everything was in in Cyrillic. Uh huh. So also is your niche. You yeah. can use your own language to position yourself. Yeah, but it can. I mean, like. Definitely. It can be risky, but as well, you can see how to differentiate yourself in that. I mean, in fiber, I mean, or in fiber, in, or, yeah. or website like this. I mean, obviously, your, all your strategy, no, it's not, it's, it doesn't need to be in your own language. But yeah. in fiber, for example? Yeah. The problem with fiber is like there is a lot of people already here. And I think that, you know, fiber is, a, is a, maybe a good place, but I will find somehow a differentiation uh, some like find clients in a different way okay let's say for example like let, let, let's think about it let's think about how we can find bands yeah right? and okay. what can we offer so bands don't don't spend money and there is something extra what do you mean so instead of offering services in exchange of money what else can a band offer me Oh, so I work for them, and you can reduce the price. You mean? Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, I mean, if she has the idea of creating a label, yeah. Also, she will be really interesting to have a contract. Yeah. A contract about you want you want to do. I mean, also, uh, it's complicated because also you you have to have an eye. Well, oh, mm -hmm. an eye on this band, right? Let's yeah. say, for example, you have an eye on this band and it's really not well known yeah. at the beginning, but you know, these people have future. Or you, have, you see something. Your yeah. own talent is telling you this, right? And you can approach them and telling them, uh, I want to work with you, or, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. People contact you. And you can, okay, I'm going to bet for, this, for this, this band. Yeah. I can reduce cost. But also, I can get some rights from from this from this yeah. because she, if she wants to be a label, that can be good, especially at the beginning. Because, for example, you can you can get like part of the royalties, a percentage of the royalties, in exchange of reducing the cost. And there can be a negotiation with the bank. Like, let's say instead of charging you hundred percent, I will charge you seventy percent plus ten percent of the royalties. Then, obviously, this band, if they don't become famous, this cost, this means nothing. But if you do that with a lot of artists and some artists finally make it, one artist will cover for all the money that you lose. <laughs> but I don't know what is the percentage. I guess that this will require a deeper analysis on the market, like how many bands actually... How many bands in these languages? Actually, they are really good. Or let's say, like, yeah, they can generate that amount. because we have so many layers there. We have many layers, like language. Also, we have the layer of uh, uh, the style, the general. Yeah. This, I mean, how many 
hip uh, not hip hop uh, R&B 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 mm, and indie mm. but still I think that for example this deal can be something especially as I said at the beginning because Christy will be interested in getting clients yeah um, if you get these clients in the end it's working for a little bit less price without lowering your price but you get something in exchange and probably in most of the times it will be nothing but then if then you synergize that with the label and then you try to push because in the end then she can she can sell that part like yeah I record you I have 10% of the royalties so actually it's in my best interest interest that I will push you to be famous because then if I sell these royalties I will get a lot of money yeah I'm, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about the, the um, sorry I'm going back again to the complicated stuff yeah, because yeah. I think it's like more things that you can manage as a, yeah. as a company I think more more safe you can be of the product yeah. at the end right if you're only managing the package yeah. mm, the, maybe the things inside is shit yeah. but if you manage everything in control so you manage blah, 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 and then the package so it's, it's much better yeah. but it's not always possible right mm -hmm. let's say for example you produce but also you can have a label or like okay. a promotional so let, let, like that. let's do the same exercise with the label what will we you know uh, then the client because we, we will need to do the, the whole process again the, we need to profile again the client what is the client that listen this kind of music yeah but I, I was going to like Mm, uh, yeah. uh, we, we, we're going there but l l let me introduce first the idea okay, yeah, and no. then we, we can go there because the or maybe we are talking about the same I don't know <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's difficult yeah, to yeah. know um, so basically you have these artists that you bet for these artists right yeah. so you just say like, I want to give I'm going to have more more things uh -huh. but okay you have the, the, the promotion side also you mm -hmm. are the producer but also you promote it yeah. Let's say you create a website for them. You mm -hmm. create a band camp, a, a Kickstarter or something like that because they need some an album. They, you, you help them yeah. to build all this stuff, right? And then you also create like a fan base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can, be, you can have also these royalties because there is a lot of projects on... Kickstarted on this yeah, uh, yeah. like Indiegogo like, that uh, you can these are a, a way to do that like yeah but that's the thing like in the end yeah it's, it's more or less what, what I was talking about like if you promote it's in your best, best interest to have part of the rights of the band because if you really think that some of your bands can make it then you will get a lot of benefit from that then as a as a producer you no as a producer as a label you need to start contacting, for example, like festivals. Try to introduce like the people into the, your bands into festivals, into circuits of um, playing music and so on. And you need contacts for that. So that's that's the thing. Like that's why I told you it's, it's two different businesses because the approach is absolutely different. Even though it's the same product, and I understand what you mean. Like yeah. when you control the whole thing, then you can get more benefits. But in that case, the from production to label, they are like absolutely two different uh, jobs, which only link is the band. That obviously you can get benefit if, if you do that. But that's the thing. Like first, we need to see as a label who are you know how can we sell the bands, how can we sell the bands, and where to. That it will be like music festivals, right? Music movies. Music festivals, movies, TV shows, TV shows, Netflix, yeah, um, um, well, all these kind of like I guess uh, ads, all kinds of ads, yeah. But ads, I think, is yeah, ads, yeah, it, ads, it can be, yeah, it's also very. The only problem is normally all of this is such a close circuit, and but everything in music is super close. Exactly, this is the problem with music, so. You need to get contacts, and I don't know what will be like the first stage to to start getting these contacts. It depends as well. Where do you want to promote that? Because then, been, for example, Velaras. Like uh, now, it's a little bit difficult considering the political situation. Yeah, that's another. Yeah, that's true. 
So then, because the production part, you can de delocalize it. But the label thing, you cannot, it needs to be extremely like, you need to target places. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then, that's the thing. You cannot manage a band or be the label of a band that is in New York if you're in Poland. So yeah. this part of business, it's, it's, it's local. It's local. And that reduces a lot. So the first stage is producer. The first stage is producer, and when she is, she is good at producing and she has a name, creating a, a brand, and maybe at that moment, thinking about moving the business to a specific place, like Warsaw or Berlin, depends on the, on the clientele. Mm -hmm. And also, a bit, because you need to, I mean, I guess the, 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 the let's say, the, 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 amazing, the amazing movement of this, that this business will be like, I'm promoting also this kind of music out of these countries. Right? Yeah. You, I mean, I'm investing on, let's say, my time and my effort on producing these bands, but also if I want to open the market. Yeah, going open, somewhere else. I think you need to open the market somewhere. As well, and another way to do that is, yeah, like more like the project you're saying. Imagine you have a band from, I don't know, uh, Egypt. Mm -hmm. Egypt, right? But you have a circuit in Poland. You are located in Poland and you get contacts of, you go to the main five, six cities and you get a circuit. You speak with five, six clubs that they pay to your band and say, I will bring you a circuit of bands like from other places and so on mm -hmm. and festivals and so on then you bring bands from outside to Poland mm, yeah but I don't know how much money because normally like being realistic here if I'm owner of a bar how much interest I have in bringing a band that is not known because it's a risk <sighs> I don't know how many people is going to come unless they have like really good promotion so so it, 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 the music industry yeah. is like very complex. Very difficult also. It's very, very difficult, uh, especially when, when it goes to promotion. Because it, it incurs in this so many things. Like, let's say that you have this circuit of bars, but uh, you know these clubs are not going to pay a lot for a band because for them to pay a lot of money for a band, they will need to get benefit out of this and what is the benefit of this one idea then one idea let's say for example that um i'm gonna to create a i wouldn't say a festival because festival is a really big stuff yeah but i'm gonna i'm gonna find some cultural background on um in what i am mm -hmm. about associations or something like that about the language I, or the culture i'm trying to bring and then we are trying and me as a producer, also mm -hmm. I will have experience to deal with bands and deal with yeah. stuff. So I'm gonna try to also um, kind of associate different yeah. different places and different also the government if it's possible. Yeah. Because, and I'm gonna to promote this. And also it can be also your own uh, um, offer to the, to the band sometimes if you want. I'm gonna offer you a stage here, for example. That would be good. Like yeah, like in the end. I think that festivals will be like the way to go, mm -hmm. especially with it's like cultural festivals and you bring this kind of, but again, like how many festivals of this, you know, they are, and you mean in the market? Yeah. I to make know. it because to, to, to bring a band, it costs a lot of money. So yeah, I think that, 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 that requires a lot of thought, but I guess that the best way would be like the festival, like folkloric festival, yeah. cultural festival, because in that cases there are money, because normally these associations either they have a lot of money or they're supported by local governments and they really have a big, bigger budget to hire bands. And this can be like the best way to do that, like going into, into these kind of festivals and so on. Yeah. What about crazy idea? Mm -hmm. Let's go like let's go crazy, okay? Let's say that you want to um, 
In, there is a lot of DJs, for example, like right, uh -huh. like DJ music, not only electronic music, but also they have like a, I remember it was like um, I don't know, I don't know if you remember this bar called Balkan in Plaza Bonitza. It was uh, and there was DJs there playing okay. music, Balkan music. Okay. And it was really good. It, honestly, it was really nice. And the bar was crowded all the time, and it was like really nice ambient, you know, like uh -huh. because like. It was really, you know, Balkan music is really happy it was yeah. like, and these kind of things. What about contacting DJs like this one and just trying to show them these bands? Just you, you can, uh, uh, to like promoting because they can express also the yeah. interest about this. No, I mean, in the end, I guess that it's, it's a matter of doing all this. Because that's it's the all thing. of these. Like, because like, that's the thing. That's the problem about music. It's so difficult and so it's close. Extremely, it's extremely. It's 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 very complicated. The, the part of promotion, it's like is the most complicated thing because people only want the bands that they are famous. Yeah. And the way to get famous is like little by little getting into these kind of festivals and and so on, and becoming popular on on that. I guess that the best. If you really want to dedicate yourself to to being a music label, your main focus is not really even like the music, but the contacts. The contacts. Yeah. If like I'm thinking, if I really want to have a music label, the first thing that I need to have is contact. Is know people in the radio. Okay. Know somebody in the in a, in the who is organizing the festivals know like who is making the Poland rock this festival in Poland yeah. getting into the organization and start like I think that that will be like the, the best way to get promotion is to have friends <laughs> yeah. in important places well, but that's also I think um, that's a lot of creative people like uh, a most I mean, really horrible amount of times they really neglect to have a contact, uh, to associate and to um, go with someone else yeah. and just socialize. They forget all the time because this, one of the things about artists in general, like the, the ego is really, sometimes it's difficult to manage, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's a, uh, but it's normal because they are yeah. stars, they want, you know, like, it's, it's a it's very difficult to fight against, right? But it's association just, a collaboration with other people is really is really important actually no as a as a music label or as a promoter it's it's a, essential yeah. like your networking needs to be on top yeah. so that's the thing i think that more or less the part of the of the production we have it covered like maybe we we can we can speak a little bit or we can i don't know how do you want to do it like we go back to the production and, and we try to finish that or we no let's go it. back to production because, because i think it's also a really important uh, yeah it's the first stage actually because i, I think that in the production uh, we can think a little bit about what would be the social media strategy and more or less we have everything else right like we know the business model we know the, the budget the budget is Mm, zero. Nothing. I'm zero. basically like investing in in, in It's in the the pricing and, and the and how yeah. how to get visible. Let's talk about before we're talking about the social media and all the stuff. Let's talk about competitors. Mm -hmm. How it's uh, how is there is plenty of competition. <laughs> uh, Everything think. is difficult. Everything yeah. is difficult. M music yeah. is is difficult, <laughs> but. The competition, for example, as we did, we go to to Fiverr, mm -hmm. and there is like hundreds of people doing that. But so they're how, very specializing in one gender. They are like there is everything. Oh no! But anyways, I guess my my strategy will be to somehow get away from Fiverr because for me it's for me Fiverr is a little. I, I have this feeling that Fiverr is like the low cost yeah. solution. And I guess that what, what she wants to do is something like, you know, really more different level, like more professional. Yeah. So I don't say don't be in Fiverr, but I don't think that Fiverr will be the strategy. I try to position yourself in Fiverr. What about other websites similar to Fiverr, but only for producers? Yeah, I will need to, to check that like. Yeah. So like, the, the, um, I because I think, like, I don't know. 
I see a lot of um, uh, freelancer, but this as well, like yeah, kind of like um, it's interesting. It will be interesting to see how 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 many how many people, let's say, because um, the offer that they that they have is just everything is online oh. basically. Music production services. Like this is like, for example, I I got to web page that they offer everything, like full song production, orchestral production, some writing, everything. Yeah. So, so that's like, they're very big. But I guess more professional, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's like very, but to see more or less, like if I can see prices, for example. Yeah. No, there are no prices. Yeah. Yeah, yeah probably because it's more professional, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that, that's uh, uh, um, let's um, if we talk about like let uh, that you can go anywhere you 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 can be anywhere right yeah. on the, on this on this on this business it's just you can be um, it's not even better to stay on the places that you want to be uh, like grow let's say she's attached to Slavic countries right yeah. Oh, like in this part of Europe, let's mm -hmm. say. Yeah. It won't be better to stay here. Yeah, yeah, I think that she should stay here. Unless she finds a community, a big community of musicians somewhere. Yeah, but uh, for the production role, she can be here. The only thing that would make sense if considering like total freedom is to go to any place that is like Thailand that is cheaper because you can still pay the same Like you can charge the same amount of money yeah. and save costs. But well, Thailand is not bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean like <laughs> But I don't think that she is that I don't know if this is what she wants, but let, let's assume that she wants to stay in Poland. So she can be here and produce bands from everywhere. But the the, the point is like how she will launch herself to the world to get these clients. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, contacts. You 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 you, you said before. Contacts yeah. is one hundred percent sure that you mm -hmm. have, you need to do that, and also knocking on the door of these bands. Yeah. So going like in a exactly. What what would be the 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 strategy? Like let's say like I don't have no bands. I don't have no friends. <laughs> I know I'm a, a good producer. I have a, a good set of skills, and I can reach people around the world. What is the first thing that I should do? As you said before, we live in a in an internet era, right? Mm -hmm. So, mailing, mailing campaigns, mailing campaigns, mailing campaigns, and just go. But I think it will be very, very, I mean, crucial to be to have everything under control. Let's say the offer has to be really, really good, no. but also every question has to be answered. Mm -hmm. Because y y no doubt about that, and yeah. they, you need to look legit. Yeah. So okay, that's a good point. You need to look legit. So before even starting the mailing, the first thing will be to establish your internet presence. Internet presence. So I'd basically, say. what Instagram, TikTok, website will be the best. Okay, website. Because professional website. Professional website. Like, in this case, will be like very necessary to yeah. have a website. Yeah. And actually, if you don't have a lot of expenses, it would be even advisable not to do it like in any cheap theme, but like hire like a good professional yeah. and get that really like top notch web page yeah. because your your internet presence is going to be your introductory card. So you need to look pro, yeah. good good pictures, good music, good, um, good profiling, good profiles, everything. Just has to be like working all the time fast because. We forget sometimes that it like, uh, depends what you're building yeah. and where it can be really slow for some people. Yeah, yeah. Also taking in consideration if you're going online and if you have to think about your target, right? Mm -hmm. we, we define the target. It's some, some political situation is a little bit complicated. Also, you have to be sure that on the place that you're um, opening the website and all the social media is allowed to show on the country that you want to go. Uh-huh. So that, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you're, you're in Poland, okay, but let's say, for example, I don't know, uh, some website is banned in Egypt. Yeah. So you will need as well like some, like, 
yeah, well, not a webmaster, like like a SEO, like a specialist. Yeah, but, but also, yeah, I mean, that would be really, really recommendable, actually, having a CEO especially yeah. specialist. That, but that should be like all the money that you have to invest should go there, like CEO. But also, I think it's, I mean, it, it, let's say, as you said, you don't have money. Uh -huh. And you don't have uh, friends, and you don't have, <laughs> yeah. you don't have you're, you're alone in the world. <laughs> you're alone in the world, but you have a lot of passion yeah. and a lot of time, right? Okay, let's say that. So still you can do it yourself, because it's not difficult to get a web page. Yeah, uh, let's say you, you, you can do it by yourself with a template or whatever. Also, uh, uh, research, a small research on the internet, you can mm -hmm. see uh, normally this... Um, on this hosting and domain service and everything, you have uh, information about the band, p bands, countries, and everything. Yeah, okay. And you normally you have this. Yeah. Uh, and if not, you can ask. You can send an email to say, "Hey, I'm going to do that. I can be sure that it's going to be visible there." So it's so Perfect. especially with like this so, research. Research yeah. is, is important to do. So that. we have the web page, and then what in social media? Social media, Spotify. That for sure. Spotify. Yeah, all this YouTube music also. You have YouTube music and all this. Uh, Bandcamp. Especially if you go to with this. Uh, Bandcamp. With this. Yeah, uh, with whatever work that you have already. Yeah. You need to put Just, everything yeah, you have. Everything. everything what about TikTok? That. Because I have the feeling that maybe it can be. I don't know. I, I don't use TikTok, but. I don't use TikTok, but I'm, we, have, we have to be. Um, we. we we need to be uh, conscious that it's a really big platform. It's huge. And you can have... It's almost the same, sometimes the same effect. It will be like in a big campaign, ad campaign uh, for somewhere. Yeah. If a fucking song... Sorry. Okay. If, a song, if a song is really, like, uh, really popular, you can have millions and millions of reproductions of your uh, plays of your, of your song. So it's also really good. So what kind of content, like for example, if I'm, if I'm Christy, I want to, okay, I have my web page, then I'm going to set my TikTok profile. I can do videos uh, either showing how I produce or showing how I play. But I don't think, I don't think this is the, the goal, uh -huh. I would say, on TikTok. Because the goal is not like you showing, I mean, it can be a goal, uh -huh. but I think in this case we'll be like, Put your music on TikTok. That can people because normally you can choose yeah. if you upload a video on on TikTok, you can choose music. Yeah, but how, how? But in the end, she okay. So she's there. She generates content and she wants to put the music as a background. Yeah. But what is the content? But let's say, for example, tutorials about okay. like um, things, that, facts about music, or let's say, do you know? I don't know. Do you have to also think about the target that you go right? Yeah. I mean, okay, let's put uh, a target about um, people who are really interested in this kind of music, yeah. or you can say stories about music, facts about musicians. Do you know how you, how the scat was invented, for yeah. example, or, or like something a like this? Small production tricks but this is more technical yeah this is more technical but do, do you think like a band that in the end as a producer she's gonna be targeting bands bands are they know but, are, are you, but, but that's a question the question is are you gonna target bands on TikTok or are you gonna promote your content on TikTok that's different you can do both you can do both but also it has to be clear yeah but, um, Let's think oh, about I mean, that. I mean, but what, the, the good thing about social media is you can A, B test. Okay, you can yeah. do it all the time. If something doesn't work, you can change it. Yeah. And it's not a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you, can, you can choose and also see the reviews. Sorry, the views at the end. Mm -hmm. You can see how many views they have, these kind of things. And it, that, that will be like, but not the only on TikTok, obviously. Yeah. But no, no, uh -huh. I'm thinking because it's true. Like one thing is to place your songs, the other is to. But in the end, the end game is to sell your services as a producer, or not necessarily, or just um, gaining uh, gaining visibility. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't need to sell anything. You only yeah. want to use the social media to gain raise visibility okay. about what you're doing. Okay, so that that can be like the the two things, right? Like either like promote your songs to get visibility or, or selling the things. Or selling things, yeah. Uh, and then what other Instagram would be interesting? 
On Instagram, I will use recordings like your life mm -hmm. as a diary. It would you be know. really interesting to see. And because in the end, that's the thing. Like I think that we need to keep in mind that what we want is to attract people that buys the product. I, I'm thinking like, so I'm a producer. I need to get bands that I produce, and I don't want to go Fiverr. Yeah. So Fiverr is an option, but I don't want Fiverr to be my main yeah. source because in the end, if I charge 100 euros in Fiverr, Fiverr will get some commissions. Yeah. And I will get like half, if so, plus taxes, plus whatever. I'm not making a lot of money there. And there is people that is already selling services for 20. So how, how I attract clients uh, uh, through social media? And because the web page, we got it. Like traditionally, web page and CEO for positioning. And just, yeah, exactly. For positioning, it's just reputation. Yeah. yeah. And then social media, I'm, I'm still thinking like how to attract clients in with social media. With social media, I guess it will be like following a lot of festivals and a lot of people from there, and also following a lot of artists. Uh huh. I mean, also it's interesting to follow them and also tagging them in things that you do because yeah. this is something that we like uh, and uh, really a lot of people forget. It's just like tagging. You can tag people. Yeah. You can tag people with the things that you do. Let's say, for example, a band that you really like. And you know it's not going to happen, but you're going to, because they have a contract, the big blah, blah, whatever. Okay, you choose one of these bands and you do arrangements, uh -huh, yeah. covers or whatever. Yeah. And you, you see, they see your potential. And a lot of people who is following this band will we'll check. Yeah. They will check on the hashtags, on the, all the content that you yeah. have. They, oh, who is this person? Yeah, obviously me, probably, because I don't, I don't do music. I will say, okay, whatever, it's not for me. But for someone who is following this band yeah. and they want, they are musicians and they're a band, also they can be like... Can be, like a, can be interesting, yes. Uh, the other thing is like what you said about the mailing, because I think that she will need to be aggressive. Yeah. Because, okay, so once that we have established the, the online presence, let's think uh, like, aggressive strategy of mailing. How do you reach to bands? Like you need any kind of repository. Like how do you do this kind of marketing mailing? For example, if you don't have any resource, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. But you have ChatGPT. Uh huh. Okay. Let's introduce these new tools that we have. That yeah, exactly. Uh, for some things are amazing. Uh, okay. So let's say use ChatGPT to create uh, different mailings, mm -hmm. right? Different like the, 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 the text a text and try to do different versions about this yeah try to ask ChatGPT how we can just to approach how can you be polite how can you be do it also it be like engage directly the people there yeah you need to create content on these mailings that they can see you that you're trustful mm -hmm. and also they are like uh, they, they can they can find something interesting on you. Yeah, you can, it's true, like you can create actually like different versions. And I guess that the email per se is not a problem. What I see challenging is once that you have your email or different emails, how do you reach to people? Like where, where to find these clients? All these, all these bands, I'm sure they have social media. I mean, when I'm talking about email, it can be in social media as well, huh? just yeah, uh, yeah, huh? because some people, they don't really, not everyone is really great with social media and these, the, the resources out there. Mm -hmm. So let's say some bands, they can be really good, but they don't have website, for example. Okay, but you can use Instagram. They have something for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So these mailings can be on, not only on by email, but it can be like on Instagram. Or any social media that you have. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, where can it be like a place where you have already like a big list of, of bands that are not like famous? Festivals? Let's say, for example, I, if I would like to know, me, who I don't know anything about music, I mean, this kind of music, if I want to know which bands are like the medium stuff like it, it interested me, I will go to websites related with music, mm -hmm. indie or um, she wants to do like R&B or whatever, 
Czech festivals, Google the names, uh-huh. spending a lot of time Googling the names, spending a lot of time checking for these bands, checking a lot of hashtags on Instagram, hashtags on, on all these social media that you can use using Bandcamp. You have, in Bandcamp, the, 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 the search bra tool, it works really good. Yeah. You have a lot of tags on Bandcamp. Okay. And you can use that also. That, that like curate yourself a list of bands. Yeah. But that, that can be a lot of like it's time consuming. It, it, it's a strategy. Yeah. But as well, maybe like targeting just Google ads, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. Like find a, a profile that you can target and, and go crazy on that. But that costs. Money. It costs money. It costs money. But also, I think it's kind of like um, you don't have a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, expenses because you have yeah. everything at home, no? Yeah. So, so you will need to, to test. Like, yeah, I mean, like, what I would advise here is to take, because imagine, like, you cannot hire a social media manager, but something that I will recommend is to pay the 20 euros per month of ChatGPT or any other. Yeah. And use it as a, as your social media manager because yeah, totally. a, probably a social a, a good social media manager is gonna be better. But for 20 euros a month, you can have better than an average social media manager probably. And it's better. It's better than um, that with nothing. You know. Like yeah. It's better than nothing. So. It's and then use that to to create your your campaign. Actually, I'm gonna make a test right now. Like okay. I have the chat GPT. So let let's let's make a test like. Uh, I want to create a ads campaign to promote myself as a music producer. I want to offer services to bands and artists that play <laughs> Indie, R&B, and uh, what says the other? What was the other? Soul. Soul. So my main focus is languages, like minorita- minority languages, like Slavic or North African languages. And what else can we say to the prompt? Um, <laughs> make me. Th- thank you. <laughs> make a step by step social media campaign. That's it. It's like, like very. Well, like, we're waiting for that. Don't happen to you. Like, I'm super polite with ChatGPT all the time. Uh, yeah, like, it's, it's good to be polite because you never know when the machines are going to take over. <laughs> it's like, they, they will remember who was I polite. Feel, yeah, I feel, like, I feel like, I don't know, like, if it is a machine, yeah. can, you, can you do that? Please, please. please. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be rude to the machine just in case yeah, they become like, like, like stuff, yeah, exactly, yeah. Terminator thingy. <laughs> so you see, like, Okay, that was like a very, very short prompt, but it's already like creating like a very huge answer. Okay. And you know, if you don't have a, this kind of like social media manager, it's, it's great because it's like, yeah. define campaign goals, objective, promote music, production services, blah, blah, blah. Target audience, we have given that. Okay. Step two. Audience research and targeting. Identify where your audience is most active, oh, Instagram, YouTube, yeah. exactly, that yeah. we were spoken. Uh, focus on regional platforms in Slavic and North African countries. And then like contact in Eastern Europe and local groups in North African musicians. Define demographics traits, like 18 to 45, location. Create the social media profiles or enhance the existing one. Develop a content strategy. And then it says, you know, like video ads, testimonials, yeah. behind the scenes, Q&A sessions. This is a basic for yeah. post uh, Post frequency. Instagram, Facebook, four to five times per week. YouTube, one quality video per week. TikTok, daily snippets and tips. You know. 
collaborate with local artists or influence. So already the, the point is like you have already like huge ton of ideas here to stop. You could, yeah, I mean, uh, I uh, I will say like um, careful with the with the social media, let's say um, the frequency because mm -hmm. it's a very generic stuff. Yeah. So <coughs> you have to analyze depends the depends the, the the marketing depends who you are. You have to increase or, or normally increase or add something. Yeah. Anyways, like. But instead, I mean, in, in any ways, you have a lot of information. Yeah. Like, one thing that I would like the people that listen to us to know is like, remember like ChatGPT or the any oh. generative AI tool is not it's not gonna do the job for you. Mm -hmm. You need to think, but it's it's a great tool to get hints or beginning like starting points but keep asking the you know you are going to be the one that is going to direct the tool and the tool will keep you giving you good ideas but not for one prompt you're going to get a good thing yeah. like we we did this prompt and i got a 10 steps uh, process but the idea is like i keep adding information and I, I i don't like this i want to do it differently my range of clients is this one and then you get more ideas. So that's a, a great I, way to I use it. I completely agree with you because I think it's ChatGPT uh, or any kind of uh, generative AI, AI is a tool. Yeah. It's not a, a, a god who is going to give you solutions for everything. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, uh, it's, very, it's very good to have it in consideration. OK, so I don't know if is there anything else that what else? Um, I would like to talk about I mean just very briefly but I uh -huh. think it's like uh, it's not really like uh, uh, long stuff it's about the risks oh yeah we that this person that. can have a, a, a doing that okay okay let's talk about risks <clears throat> who as it is a business that at least the, the promotion part it's not a business that requires like that has like a lot of entry barriers, the risks are pretty low. Because it's whatever you spend in social media, if it doesn't work, that's it. You don't get the revenue, but you are not you don't have a monthly expenses. Mm, yeah. Yeah, because you you have you own everything. No, it's, yeah. it's, it's more about like the talent and then the the, the the things that you have. So this is this is why it's it's difficult to make it. But on the other hand, like why not to do it? Because the risk is so low that it's worth to even like whatever you invest. Okay, you can lose that, but that's the only thing that you can lose in the end. What can happen if if you don't get clients? That's it. Okay, let's say for example, like, I don't know, being a little bit more like um, pessimistic, right? Okay. Let's say for example, you have, um, you need to prepare really very well contracts with the artist. Okay. When it comes to, for example, if you have royalties and stuff like this, yes. Because I guess the risk can come in this way more yeah than, the, the the production part is almost no risky because the 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 transaction is simple i produce a song the only thing is like you will need exactly expectations okay you need to manage the expectation of the band very well because if you are doing not by hours but by songs you need to make sure that the band will understand what is the scope of your work you need yeah. to define very well what you can do and what you cannot do and that's it. And then it, it's a matter of style. Yeah. Some bands may like what you do because this is this is the the part of the artistic thing, right? Yeah. Some people will love it, and some people will think like, yeah, what a waste of money because they don't like your style. But if you are good enough in your advertising, they will know already what you do. Yeah. Then when it comes to the label part, risks are a lot more complicated because then there are a lot of stakeholders because if you're moving a band into a festival you have on the one hand the band on the other hand the festival different interest and you're in the middle different interests mm, yeah uh, you need to make sure if the band gets paid if the festival doesn't pay 
who covers the, the expenses. If the band doesn't show up or does a show 30 minutes long, who is covering the expenses? So in that case, it's exactly what you would say. You need to speak with the bands and really see all that stuff, who is going to be responsible. Yeah. And everything in the contract needs to be extremely detailed, like the show must last this time if the band doesn't show up because it's the band's fault the the money should be covered by the band because probably like the festival will maybe like request a penalty if they have a contract yeah. i don't know exactly how it works but it's it's as well like reputational if i'm managing an artist and i go with a festival and my artist doesn't show up then it's most likely that this festival is not going to hire me anymore. Yeah. Any of my artists. Yeah, exactly. And um, also, let's say, for example, for technical problems or something like that. Let's say, for example, like um, a festival, just uh, they have uh, this uh, electricity just goes like, yeah. goes crazy. Or they, they, I don't know, they sell more tickets than they should or... The guy goes, the promoter of the festival goes to prison for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. It happened more than I know, time. I know, it I know. happened. It's a real case scenario. Yeah. For that reason, yeah, I, I guess that the most important thing is to have either like very tight contracts or a lawyer with you. Because this is, the, this is what we've been speaking the whole podcast about the part of the, of the label. That it's it's a whole different yeah but stuff I, because it's it's you need to have everything so tied up because you're handling the festival or you're handling the radio or at the same time the band and you have a contract with A and with B and you are just in the middle yeah and everybody whoever fails everybody's gonna ask responsibilities to you yeah. you are the the middle person yeah and I've been I've been pushing this uh, going to the label all the time in the postcard they were like you yeah. were like let's go to the producer like but no but the label just, <laughs> you were like no let's yeah, go yeah, to the yeah, podcast no, exactly. <laughs> because the, the label is it's like I, I see like the whole thing for a whole uh, new podcast because it, it has its own things but the and it's the the major risks it's a, yeah it's a nightmare and probably yeah. that's the thing if you are not already there, the, the business opportunity, it's so risky, you have so much to lose and so few to win, that unless that you have already a very strong network, it's not worth to do it. Yeah. It's, it's a, unless you have already like a lot of artists and a lot of connections and then... So, as a recap, yeah. let's say, first, create your own business plan. Mm -hmm. let's say with your identity the values the everything that you want to do um, create your social media create everything create everything like website and everything and just being covered and start doing produce uh, as a producer yeah right yeah and then focus on that if that makes money I will move to the next step like once that you are like established as a producer if you make it as a producer then making a label is extremely easy no not easy sorry it's easier it's gonna be easier because then you will already have like uh, fame you're gonna have contacts because by being a, a good producer you're gonna be in places yeah. and by being in places you will know people and then the risks are gonna minimize. So that yeah. this, is, this is what I will do. And invest, saving some money from your own normal income to, yeah. to invest in your idea. Yeah. But without being crazy. Exactly. No? Because yeah. it's a really insecure and unstable business. Totally. I would say. But a lot, a lot of, a lot of uh, passion. That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for anything, I think that's the uh, that's the end of the analysis. No. Yeah, I, I mean, think that it covers. Yeah. We uh, we repeat again. Um, we, if you have a project, if you want to um, be the main star on this podcast, <laughs> we will. Uh, you can send us anything that you want. We will also. We can. We uh, you can send us an email or without anything. 
and uh, we will see each other next next time with the next next episode. week we'll be here with another with a, case with a, a different case with a, like it's trying to make it even better uh, um, yeah that's a promise that we can do right yeah we can promise that we will try to do it even better every day uh, but it's a start it's a start and we are every, everything starts Exactly. somewhere and this is our start <laughs> so thank you very much and if you have anything to say no yes like as always good luck to Christy with her business and we'll see you all next week yeah thank, thank you. you very much